Jim posted a number of interesting questions, some of which he said were actually addressed in the making of. Uh, but you were interested in the editing, Jim. So tell us, tell us what your question was. Thanks. It was clearly you also referred in one of the, the uh, threads to posting a number of outcuts which weren't shown. And given the voyage actually lasted 40 days, there must have been a lot of footage that wasn't used. It was still very good footage. So I'm just wondering how a, an editor approaches editing. You know, what, what are they looking for? What do they think is less valuable? So, given that there's not much, much of material available. Sitting on my right-hand side, just here, on my screen anyway, is Matt Platt-Mills, who is a professional editor, who's edited many, many, many documentaries, a few for, for my good self. So, Matt, what happens when a producer walks in on day one into an edit? Talk us through the, the beginnings. Well, usually, I mean, it's, 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 a, it's a big question, actually, of the edit work. Um, you have a, you're faced with a, a vast amount of material. So uh, generally the producer will probably walk in on day two or day three, maybe even day four, once you've had enough time to sit down and sort of understand the material that's been captured. So you're not, you, 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 you just start watching everything, um, logging it, um, processing it, putting it in different parts, different areas, sort of understanding the film that's in front of you or the, or the disparate parts of the film that's in front of you. And you can learn a lot from just watching the rushes, a lot about the kind of the emotional state of the director, um, the sort of sensibility of the director, the cameraman, uh, and you start to get ideas as you watch this material. Um, there are lots of different types of films as well, so there's there are much more um, uh, sort of free films, so there are lots of actuality um, being shot. I can't speak for... Um, how the editor approached this film, but I can see there must have been a lot of actuality of people doing things. And so when you look at that material, you start to search for stories within that material, not necessarily things that, that have been particularly alighted upon by the director or anybody. And many times there will be, the director will often say, this is really interesting, I like this, or um, look at this point here, this fantastic little uh, tableau, and this is really great, and it really feeds into what we're discussing. Uh, but often you'll just start searching through and you'll find these really intimate moments, really interesting moments um, that aren't necessarily uh, within the script or within the initial intention, but they may be very tonally resonant. So you then start to build little sequences out of that or just sort of log them in your brain and think, OK, uh, there was a lovely moment between these two crew members when this happened or, you know, um, uh, yeah, or, or a beautiful set of uh, a beautiful communication between this character and this character, and they reveal something really interesting about you know this aspect of the film. Um, and then once you've sort of begun to get your head around things, at that point the director will come in, uh, and you'll start to sort of discuss with them their intention. Um, and if they're a great director, they will bring you a script, and then life is kind of very easy. Uh, you start to you start to piece together the material. They, they'll, they'll simply say, right, this is how I initially viewed the film. It'll be 28 pages of document. You'll read through it and go, okay, great. And they'll say, I was really thinking all this material about, I don't know, say that, you know, when we landed here, this is all for this sequence, although we could also use it in this part of the script as well. Um, uh, and then there's all this, this. So they'll start to place bits of the film within the script, if that makes sense. So they're filled with material. They'll, still, they'll decide to put it somewhere within them. So they've, as they were shooting, they would design sequences for certain parts of their script. The script would also say, you know, this is happening now, that's happening now. Mm. Um, then there'll also, there'll be these sort of beautiful moments that you together will search through and discover, and then you try and find places within the film uh, to put them. And then it's just a lot of donkey work <laughs> at that point. Once you've kind of got an idea, you understand where the director's coming from, You've got the script in front of you, then you just start bolting the whole thing together. It sounds a little bit um, uh, uncreative, and in a way it is. You're just sort of boiling this material down. You watch it over and over and over again. You choose the best bits. You choose the next sequence of best bits, which are the best bits of the best bits. And then you choose the next sequence of best bits, which are the best bits of the best bits of the best bits. And you start to build the film out of what you consider to be the best bits. And then at some point, what happens is the is that you start to realise that initial intentions of the film 
probably don't do the material justice. So they have all these ideas, and then you'll be discovering things in the film in the, in in what's been shot, and you're thinking you and the director sitting going, actually, you know what? This I, I I initially thought this was really interesting, but you know, reassessing the material now and looking at what we've, what, we've, what we've captured, actually, this aspect's much more interesting. How can we how can we push the story around so that this becomes a, a main mistake? And maybe what do we have to start considering that we're going to lose in order to get this to work? And then if we do lose that, how does that affect the overall structure of the film? Um, at that point, you start to play this. So, and it's sort of the bit that I find most interesting, actually. The assembly bit, the, the bit that's the donkey work, is, is very much donkey work. But the notes process, when you start to boil down, once you've structured the film and you've found the best moments everywhere and the bits that most resonate with you, and you start to really boil the film down to a streamlined piece of cinema, well, cinema, I say cinema, but a streamlined film, a story that, so that the audience will engage with, um, that's for me is the most interesting part of the process because you really start to uncover what the film should could should be. Okay. And then you bring a whole lot of other people in, like uh, people like John Farron, and they go, "Well, I'm not sure about this. So I don't know why. What were you doing here?" And then you <laughs> take the whole thing to pieces again and start again. <laughs> Sprin- sprinkling our magic dust, we call it. Jim, is is that is that helpful? Is there any uh, further further queries or points or you want to make, or Jim or anyone, in fact, Jim first. Uh- well, that was very helpful from my perspective. So thank you very much. <laughs>